Oh, hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back to a new coloring adventure with C.L. Aldridge Art. And as you can see, we have reason to be sitting here doing a happy, happy, happy dance. Um, uh, the other week, a, uh, a, a the lovely Morticia contacted me and uh, showed me uh, a picture of uh, of some dots on a uh, on a piece of um, uh, watercolor paper. They were watercolor uh, paint dots, and said that they needed to come live at my house, and um, and they have arrived, and so much more. Uh, and I have just been, I mean, other than having opened the tape on the box, the, I opened it, I saw the letter, I went, oh no, I got to save this to do a video on because it's pretty amazing. So, happy mail. Watercolor dreams really do come true. Thank you, Morticia, from the bottom of my heart for those people who do not know who I am. My name is Christine Aldridge. I am an artist. I am not a watercolor artist. I am a coloring book artist. I do draw coloring books. Uh, and here they are. Uh, well, this is one. And then, of course, there's a whole bunch of my books here on the back of this one. And this is a sampler book that has 40 of the example, so you get this one, you decide that you like my art, then you can start collecting all the other books. Uh, there's even a Mandela only book, and I'll show it to you later. <laughs> right now, what I want to do is I want to look at this. So the first uh, thing that I want to say is, um, this is quite possibly the best art box that uh, has ever been put together. It is beautifully neat. Look at this. The customs declaration says uh, what's in it, and but it's uh, no way to prepare you for how professionally and how beautifully it has been put together. So of course, everything in the box is protected by bubble wrap. And the first thing that I want to say is this um, uh, is basically an inventory of everything that's in the box. Now, I do want to say that um, uh, Morticia is just one of those amazing people. Uh, she will uh, tell you she doesn't do an awful lot of conversation is because uh, one of her accidents, and she does have severe neck injuries, um, have left her hands and arms uh, numb and weak. And she says, for over 20 years, people have asked me why I kept all my art supplies. Now I know part of them was going to move to you. Um, I just needed to learn to know you first. And, uh, you know, that is, that Morticia, that is so amazing. And I am so grateful um, to, to know people like you, that the generosity in the art community and especially among artists, uh, of which I consider colorists to also be artists, is simply amazing. I love this. Um, geek links about pigments. So if you wanted to know uh, about pigments, there are uh, worldwide websites. Uh, paper samples. She's actually sent paper samples of uh, uh, Fabriano Artistico Traditional White 100% Cotton GSM Cold Pressed Granafina, uh, which is fine grain, and then A5 Arches, also 100% Cotton uh, 300 GSM Hot Pressed Satin Grain. She sent brushes, um, and I will look at all of that. As we unpack them, there are Karen Dash Neo Colors in the box. There are the there's dot cards. There are uh, 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 
there is There's a, there's a page that I'm missing, and there are pans, uh, watercolor pans that include Jackson's art watercolors, samples of these, uh, Audison, uh, Ockvarelbarg, uh, I'm Odoson, um, I'm assuming that is uh, a Swiss or uh, German, Ockvarel would be watercolor. Um, the Shin Han Premium Extra Fine Watercolor Paint, uh, you know, just samples of some of these. Turner Artists uh, Watercolor Paint, Daniel Smith Watercolor Paint, look at all the colors in the Daniel Smith, Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor Paint, a St. Petersburg White Knights that uh, isn't even available anymore, it's from 2008. So, archive things, very, very special, special things. Uh, and then, of course, the dots, uh, more uh, Daniel Smith watercolors, uh, Turner Artist again, uh, Shinon again, and Isario watercolor paint. So, uh, just the, the time that it took to put this together is, is just amazing. And then look at how it's packed, everybody. It deserves going through item by item. So the first item here on top, uh, I'm guessing, is the watercolor paper samples. Um, and I love the fact that it's in an Ikea bag. I didn't know Ikea made their own <laughs> Ziploc bags. So this is the Arches, um, the A5 Arches Grain Satin Hot Pressed. And then the smaller, which is this one, is the Fabriano Artistico, which also is 100% cotton, cold pressed. So this is a hot pressed, the bigger one. And it is, oh wow, it is very cool. These uh, are, uh, they obviously uh, came from a pad or a block of the paper. And there are four sheets that is, oh, actually there are, uh, there's uh, two there and one, two, three, four here. So, wow. This is amazing, or three years, so there's five. And um, so this one is the hot pressed, is that right? The larger is hot pressed, 300 GSM, and this is the satin gray. So I'm just, it does feel like it's a little bit toothier on that side than it is on this side, but um, I'm going to have to study the Arches paper, but that is absolutely wonderful because, of course, watercolor paper um, can be very pricey, and so getting to test it and find out which ones you like uh, is so important. And then this is the smaller cold press, which is the Fabriano Artistico, and it is 140 pound. Um, and it is slightly more textured. So it has um, more of that, what you think of as a watercolor uh, texture. So I can hardly wait to try both of those. That is so thoughtful to include those. I'm actually going to go ahead and put it that way since it fits slightly easier for me. And then this is one of the watercolor cards. And what she does is, uh, and these are also, by the way, on watercolor paper.
when Morticia wrote to me, she said, there is a lot of tape. And welcome back. All I had to do was remove one side and look, it opens right up. So, look at this. And so these are One that's stuck right there. Okay, so they, they, she's obviously put them in here so that they didn't um, uh, disturb each other. But these are... Alright, so these are the Daniel Smiths. And there is a colored dot of each one, which is uh, a whole lot more than... Um, you might think it is because the, um, you know, watercolor is pure pigment and, uh, or not pure pigment, but pigment with whatever it is that the um, uh, manufacturer uh, uses. But the, uh, but a little bit goes a very long way, is what I'm saying. So these are very, very cool. And um, Daniel Smith, of course, makes a premier product. And just the idea of getting to try these out, um, you know, and see how they work on various papers um, and even, you know, paint a few paintings with them. There's more than plenty of paint to do all of that right here. And so these are the Daniel Smiths. These must be the... Turner, uh, the T's are obviously the Turners, so, um, yeah, and the, okay, so D's, there's, uh, and the S is the Shin Han, and The Isaro is the ultramarine pink. I love how each one is labeled with not only its um, inventory number or its pigment number and the manufacturer of it, Lunar Violet, um, beautiful names. Ooh, 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 ooh. So those are absolutely wonderful. Let me make sure that I put them back in in such a way that they are not going to uh, get all wigged out. And they are solidly attached to the page, so there's no chance of them falling off. But I, I know that that was one of the things, Morticia, that you had talked about. You didn't want them to fall off the cards. They didn't. Okay like a treasure chest. Okay, that is, all right, filler. All right, now, this, ooh, this is a pan, and this Hang on, I got a Made in Russia, St. Petersburg Artist Watercolors. So I am guessing, all right, this is the pan going to my inventory list. All of you are probably shouting at me. Okay, this is the um, White Knights uh, Glau, Glau, Glauconet. Glau, Glau, Glauconet? I don't know if... Okay. Ooh, cool. <laughs> I have to go get my universal translator. Glauconite. Number 304. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to put that over there. 
Okay. Ooh. Look at that. I love the little candy tin. This had licorice pastilles in it. Made by the uh, Rene Voltaire. Heavenly licorice pastilles. Uh, delicious licorice sweets from the licorice root 100% organic. And look at this gorgeous little tin. I love it. Absolutely love it. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at this, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at all the little pans in here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at how many of them there are. That uh, Morticia and I had a conversation once of how many half pans can you fit in a um, in a single layer in a uh, in an Altoids tin, and the answer uh, was 15, and there they are. So there's 15 there, and there is another uh, two, four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen that you can fit on a second layer, but not in Altoids because Altoids aren't aren't the tin isn't tall enough, but in this licorice there is. So what is that? 15 and 14 is 29 colors. There are 29 watercolors, half pans of watercolors, guys. 29 in here. Oh my gosh, I am going to cry because look at what's all in here, guys. It's the Jackson Art, the Otison, the Shinhan, the Turner Artist the Daniel Smith, the Windsor Newton, and the White Knights. I, uh, you know, uh, it's just a fortune in watercolor paints. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Is this the best art box ever? Oh my gosh. Morticia, you are amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can just, I can hardly wait to try these out. Look at how, you, now I know what you were up to when you were buying all those little pans and, and your comments would be, and, you know, and when you were in streams, would be like you had just, you know, filled 100 pans of watercolors. And I'm thinking, what is she doing? Oh, okay, so they're covered with tape and to protect them. And I'm only going to unpack just the one for right now. I won't make you guys all watch while I do all of this. But look at how wonderfully protected they are. I'm guessing that these uh, were in tubes. And... Um, and that she put them in the pans. And look, they even have the magnetic sticker on the bottom. So they uh, attach right to the edge of the pan. And um, just like when I did uh, this one. And, you know, although this one, although this is a single layer. And look, I can put, uh, I can put some of these in here and uh, more in there, and ooh, yay, yay, oh, I get to try all these wonderful watercolors, and this is, these are like having a brand new set of watercolors, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, 
I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. Watercolor dreams. Okay. I I know what this is, so I am I'm saving it till last because it is one of those things. Look, everybody, a palette. An actual watercolor palette. That, by the way, in case nobody knows, that is a thumb hole. And you, you, uh, you know, you can actually use it like this so that you can put your colors here and do your mixing here or put your colors here and mix your colors there. And I love it. I love it. What a perfect, perfect size. <laughs> These I am so excited about. I saw this on the list and I was like, ah! Because these are Neo Color 2s also, and these are uh, new colors, apparently. They are, I have the 40 set, so these, I looked down this list, uh, and I don't think I have any of these colors in my Karen Dash 40 set, and now I do. And what's in here is apricot flesh this is just amazing this is just amazing okay so there's the apricot and there's the flesh and there is the van dyke brown and there is the purple violet and this is the night blue and this is the turquoise green and this is the Payne's gray this is the bright green. This is the Chinese green, which is like a jade color. And this is the metallic, uh, uh, no, this is the, oh, I take that back. This is the Chinese green. And this is the phthalo green. And, uh, Thalo cyanine green and it is one of the metallics so I mean I, I am literally struck speechless just simply speechless this is the most amazing box Morticia absolutely an amazing artist box I and these folks are aside from watercolors and neons and everything else what color neos what uh, what do you think that a art a water an artist who does watercolors would send? Something that I didn't have, that's for sure. At least not any good ones. And now I can't I can't claim that anymore. Look at that. Okay. That's better. I took the opportunity to go ahead. And just unwrap them all. Okay, so in review, what we have are um, the uh, the ones with the black washi tape were here, uh, these two. And these are, uh, once again, a Wanistrum number six and a Scepter Gold two uh, made by Windsor & Newton uh, number three. And these are both... Synth uh, made of the better synthetic material um, and then this set is uh, sable hair and uh, these are beautiful I mean these are I love the wood uh, and these are made by uh, mm -hmm. it says Octa Mardnar 
and something I can't read, but there is a uh, there's a zero. There's two zeros. A number two. A number four. A number one. And another a number two over uh, one. So, yeah. or maybe it's a two zero. Yeah, two zeros. Okay, so those are cool. And those are sable hair. The long one, which is this one, is squirrel hair. Ooh, isn't that gorgeous? This is uh, made by Becker's A, uh, and it is a number 10 brush. Then there is a number 8 um, made by Artistica, and this one is uh, also uh, Sable. And uh, then these two are number six and eight, and these are made by Lavanche, uh, L-A-V-A-N-C-H-E, the 3325 series, and these also are Sable. And then there is the um, goat hair brush, which is for traditional Chinese calligraphy, this is a cool brush, uh, and it is uh, amazing. <laughs> and uh, so, my goodness, a wonderful group of brushes, and I will add those to my brush collection right here. So I am looking good. And that was it. We got to the bottom of the box. So now the next thing to do is to unwrap the uh, watercolors. And um, we'll do a little uh, 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 swatch card. And, um, and see what some of this stuff does. I am so excited and so thrilled. Morticia, this is just the most amazing gift. Um, thank you so very much. Uh, let me get set up for swatching and I'll be right back. Hi everybody and welcome back. <laughs> As you can see, it's been a few hours uh, since I uh, shut off to set up to swatch. And um, I made some choices uh, in that time. And uh, one of the things that I cho uh, chose to do is I took all of the pans uh, out of here, uh, out of the little one, and I put them into the big one. And they all fit. So now all of these pan watercolors, uh, including the ones that I made, are uh, in one palette and it must have been fate because as you can see I got all of them in and they fit absolutely perfectly not one more thing could go in here but there was room for everything uh, I used some of my pearl watercolors as separators uh, just for myself so that I know which uh, paints are which. And then I took the two lists and I compared them. So I took the dots list and the pans list and I checked off uh, any dots that had a corresponding pan and there were quite a few of them so all of these dots that I marked with asterisks have a 
corresponding pan in here. So that is just so generous of um, Morticia. And uh, there's another one. And uh, here's one. And this whole sheet has one. And uh, as you can see, this was one sheet of paper uh, that Morticia put the dots on and then cut it up for shipping. So I started uh, here uh, with this one and just swatched right on the watercolor paper. I mean, the dots were on the watercolor paper, might as well, right? And so as you can see, these are some truly lovely colors. Plus, it gives me the chance to check out the Arches watercolor paper uh, and see how it behaves. So, I'm really, really thrilled with this. And uh, so I thought I would do a couple of these and just show you how much paint there really is in one of these dots. I mean, as you can see here, I barely touched the dots as far as the amount of paint goes. And, whoops, I don't know if you can see there's, see there's so much paint on there. So that is more than plenty to do lots of pictures. Um, but I thought I'd show you what I did. I just dabbed a drop of water on each one of the dots. And gave it a second and um, so it's really cool because there were only um, there uh, on here there were uh, two colors that uh, now these are the dot cards okay so on here there were two that uh, that said they were these colors but the pan actually said they were these colors. So instead of the hematite genuine, uh, I got the 163 uh, uh, amazonite gen uh, genuine, which, if I am correct, is a beautiful blue green. And then uh, instead of the lunar black uh, pan, there was actually a brown, a PBR11 uh, brown. It said PBK11, but it was actually a PBR11, uh, and it was brown. So um, I invented my own little code here. Uh, and then there were all of these dots that were on the card, but that weren't actually listed. So it's like, it's like a bonus, like bonuses. It is so cool. Um... And then there were three additional Shin Han colors that weren't on the list as well. A Hooker's Green, an Alizarin Crimson, and a, a Pearl Yellow, Pearl? I'm going to guess that's Pearl Yellow Light um, at any rate. And I did use the little palette just uh, because, actually at this point in time, I want to switch to a larger brush. And maybe if I dipped the right end of the brush, it would be a better thing. So I'm just wetting the paper. And then just dabbing. a bit of the color to see
what it is. And of course it's watercolor, so you can blend it out as much as you want. See, now this one, this Maya Red, I have an entire pan of it so I can play with it. And see how it behaves. Clear out. Same thing is true of the Maya Yellow. That one's probably going to be a little difficult for you guys to see. Um, if I can do some color tilting away from the thing. beautiful yellow. This is the Maya Blue. Now these are the uh, Turner artist colors. Again, if it's marked with an asterisk, there's a whole pan of it. Ooh, that's pretty. That is a really pretty blue-green. Pay no attention to my stomach growling. I've been so excited for the watercolors that I haven't bothered with food. This is a Cobalt Violet. And again, there's a whole pan of this one as well. That is so cool. And this one is the, whoops, I keep rinsing in the wrong jar. This one is the Fuchsite Genuine. Fuchsite, sorry. And this one has a metallic type sheen or a pearl type sheen. And I believe that these are, um, when it says genuine like that, I think it is actually ground mineral. That is gorgeous. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Oh my. You can lighten that up. Blend it out. It's just beautiful. Uh, okay. And this is a red fusite. Sort of going wet in wet. Again, a full, full pan of this. Ooh. Now they will dry lighter than I'm putting them down, but this sort of gives me a good indicator of what the color is. This one is called Sleeping Beauty 
turquoise genuine. Uh, this, these, the last one, two, three are Daniel Smith. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and this one is the Black Tourmaline. Ooh, <laughs> I love the way that that works. I love that wet and wet effect when it just sort of shoots out in all directions. Okay. So, <clears throat> there is a second one done. And we are looking good. I really love that fuchsia... Uh, Fusite Genuine, that is a beautiful color, as is the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. Heck, they're all just gorgeous. So those are the, the Turners up there, and these are Daniel Smith's. Um, that is the Shin Han, or Shin Han up there, and these are Daniel Smith's. Ooh, let's look at the others. Okay, so we've got, I'm going to set these over there to dry. <coughs> so this one is the Mayan Eco. Actually, adding my, going here and adding my drop of water. And I love how it just sort of holds on to the water. You know, it's not it's not like it's sliding all over or anything like that. So we'll just go ahead and wait a little bit. Now, um, I likewise uh, all of the this one is also marked with asterisks, all but uh, one. So the hematite genuine. There is no pan, but I do have a, um, a even, um, I do have an example of it here. So, okay, it is what I thought it was. It is a sort of black gray, as hematite is. So let me, uh, whoops, actually this is where we want to go. We'll do it first. <clears throat> and I am going to uh, put these swatches in my swatch book. Well, actually, not right away. But once the paint, once I've used up all of the, the dot, the paint dot, then I'll put them in my a sketchbook until or for my swatch book for right now they'll just go ahead and live on the card <coughs> and I'll use up the dot first and then go to the pan because why why waste paint very cool You can make dots in it. <laughs> Just playing with the paint. Seeing what it does. Rinsing the brush. Grabbing clean water. Now I am going to have to be a little careful that I don't get into my, uh, lay my arm down in the wet paint. 
So now this is the Daniel Smith mine in yellow. Ooh. That's pretty. That is a beautiful yellow. <clears throat> Just sort of thinning it out up here to see. Yellow is one of those important colors because it's, you know, you use it so much to blend. And, whoops. Just when I didn't want to do that, I did it anyway. Laid my arm down in the wet, or my palm down in the wet paint. I know. You guys don't care if I turn it upside down, right? So this one is the Mayan Red. Ooh. No, that was the, sorry, that was the Mayan Orange. This is the Mayan Red. It's beautiful. This way I can reach. And this one is the Mayan Violet. I like nice big swatches. That way you can actually, you know, more visualize what it would look like if it were coloring an entire element, uh, you know, a, a peach or a plum or a <coughs> building or a skyline or a river or a tree or leaves or whatever. Or a dragon. So this is the Mayan dark blue. Well, these dark blues are super pigmented. I noticed this in the um, uh, in the the Shinhan one as well. And this, I believe, is Arches paper, the Arches watercolor paper. Ooh, that is beautiful. That is really. Really a beautiful color. <clears throat> Mayan dark blue. And this is the Mayan blue genuine. And for this, I'm using the synthetic number six.
which I think is perfectly fine <coughs> for swatching. I've gotten very wheezy. I was just doing the uh, every other day chore of, uh, well, it's actually, and it's supposed to be an everyday chore, but I'm not always really good at it. Um, and that is uh, cleaning the cat box. I only have one cat. She has two cat boxes, so I don't, I don't do it every day. I tend to do it every other day, but it always makes me wheezy. So this is hematite violet, genuine. Now I don't see a thing violet about this. This looks more like a, um, <coughs> excuse me, like a, um, It looks more like a sepia brown to me, although it may actually have a violet base. But it's definitely an earth tone from here. We'll see how it dries. Uh, okay. Okay, amazonite, I wanted to put the amazonite in, but it has no dot. And so that means that I have to actually figure out where in the, it is one that has a pan, but no dot. So, all right, these are the pans. The amazonite is right after the rare earth green, which is right before the Mayan yellow, yellow, orange, red. Okay, so it's got to be that one. All right, so this is the one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm a sucker for those turquoise blues and greens. That is gorgeous. Wow, that is a pretty color. Interesting, wait, wait, wait. DS-156. Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. That is that one. Black Tourmaline. And yet this says DS-156. Hematite Genuine. Now I'm confused again. Okay, and that's because the pan is marked 163, a Mazenite Genuine. But the list is more, okay. 
Well, I'll figure it out. We'll go to Daniel Smith's website and we'll figure out which one is which, but um, it doesn't really matter because it's here and it's beautiful and we can paint with it and that's all that really matters. All right, and this is the Lunar Black. Another highly pigmented and totally perfect shade. Just want to see how how gray you can get that. Oh yeah, see you can you can blend that out to just storm clouds. Wouldn't that make awesome storm clouds? Add some of uh, this in there. You know? Oh, yeah. Okay. I have now sort of gotten to the point where both of my both of my jars are mixing jars or cleaning my brush off jars. Okay, so look at how gorgeous all of those colors are. And this is the last sheet. And so we're going to uh, put the requisite dot of water. on the paints wow that one picked up a lot of it some of these whoops wow that red is a super strong color Okay, and very soft. So this is the Zoocyte Genuine. See, that is just so cool. Look at how, how it does that when it makes those runs. That is one of the most special things about watercolors. Is that they do stuff like that. I love it. So that's Zoocyte. <coughs> Now, in nature, excuse me, um, there is a beautiful stone, and it's a, a zebra, striped, zebra striped stone that is very much like that. Now, this is actually a green based. So we will. It's a green-based gray, and it's beautiful. All right, and this is Kingman Green. Now, this has no pan, so there's just the dot. So we're going to be... Oh, that's a pretty green. That's a really pretty green. I 
It's a, like a blue, blue green. Sorry, I didn't mean to <coughs> make you watch from. Anybody still watching? <laughs> Anybody still watching Swatching? I know Swatching is not my favorite thing to watch, so um, I tend to uh, not watch it, but some people love to watch it. And of course with watercolors, they're just so fascinating the way they behave, you know? So that is jadeite green. Once again, I don't have a pan on that either. Um, so these would be colors that I would need to order half pans of if I love them. Um, and I kind of love both of those greens. So I, I like greens though. So this is rare earth. And there is a pan for this. Ooh, that's a beautiful dark, foresty, you know, the depths of the forest kind of green. It is so cool the way that that paint spreads. So now this is a Payne's Gray. And Payne's Gray is sort of a bluish gray. See how it blends out to a blue? It's one of those really versatile colors as well. And I love how you can move watercolor around with water. That's the name. And so this is Bordeaux. This is another one where there's no pan. So we'll be, oh, boy, that is a pigmented color. That is amazing. I love how that bleeds. All the way out. It's a beautiful light pink. Yep, I like that one too. Here's a, one with an interesting name. This one's called Moon Glow. Purple. That is an aubergine purple. Oh my. Eggplant. Oh, that is gorgeous. Sorry. Sorry. 
I'm playing and I didn't realize I was off the screen. Lovely, lovely, lovely. This one is called Lunar Violet. There is a pan of this, it says. This is a very dark, really dark purple. It would be the, um, the, the shadow or, you know, the shade to this moon glow. You would use a moon glow in the brightest part if you were going to do an eggplant. And then you would do this in the shadow. Lunar Violet. And then, as if it's reading my mind... Here's another one that we don't have a pan of, but it's called Shadow Violet. So let's see what that is. Hmm. Different, but kind of the same to the one above, but different enough. It's more of a, of a gray purple. Interesting. Perfect for a shadow. Perfect for all kinds of shadows on all kinds of things. Now it says that this is a repeat of the 629 indigo, but uh, Shin, Han, Shin Han Shin Han Ooh, look at that. I am going to brush off that. That is a highly pigmented color. Just so you can see that it actually is a much lighter blue than that. Or can be. I'm just cleaning off some of the extra pigment there. That is really beautiful. And this, of course, is Hooker's Green, which in my ink tents is one of my favorite nature greens. Another highly pigmented. I mean, did you see I just barely touched that? And look at what it gives you. You can blend that all the way down to the lightest mint green. That also is a shin on color. And this is Alizarin Crimson. Another one that I just barely touched it. 
and look at how pigmented that is and how it runs. So pretty. Goodness gracious. I do seem to get messy with the things down here, don't I? Ooh. I love it. Okay. Then, this one is Hansa Yellow. Light. That is a very pigmented yellow. Wow. That's amazing. That is really amazing. That is almost a neon yellow. And this is the Peril Scarlet. I'm just barely going to touch that. So this is an orangey scarlet. I love this color. I love them all. I mean, I really love them all. This one also is a Daniel Smith color. I love being able to do these great big squatches too. This is a French ultramarine. Whoa. Look at that. That's a beautiful French blue. Love French blues. Okay, yes, I love that. I love Dutch blues as well. When I was a kid, my stepmother used to make ceramics. And uh, one of her favorite colors uh, to work with was French blue. And... Uh, She liked to make those ducks, you know, like the ones that uh, are in Romantic Country. So we had tons and tons of white ducks with uh, blue ribbons around their necks, French blue ribbons, and yellow bills. or beaks. This is the Lunar Earth, which is the brown. And, let's see, two more to go. And this is the Pearl yellow, I'm assuming it's pearl. It's P-E-R, abbreviated, so I'm, go I'm guessing pearl. That is, hands down, my favorite color yellow in the world.
right there. Oh, I love that yellow. Love that yellow. It is just so cheerful and wonderful, and it makes me smile every time I see it. And the last one is the Izaro. And the poor little Izaro is an orphan. But I'd be willing to bet it is a beautiful orphan. interesting it doesn't it does not it doesn't do the uh, it doesn't really do the spread thing what a pretty color though this is ultramarine pink Just taking some of the extra water off so that can dry. That's interesting. Not a highly pigmented color, very subtle, but beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, we do need to, or at least I do need to swatch the, uh, um, the, uh, the Neo colors into my book, but I may wait and do those, uh, later or I might add them here. Uh, I don't know. Hang on just a second. Okay, welcome back. And uh, the last thing that I did was uh, I consulted the list and those items on the uh, pans in the candy tin that were marked with an asterisk were items for which there was a pan but not a dot. And uh, those are these colors here, which are the Chinese white, the Odyssey, which I believe is Swedish, a Swedish company. Um, uh, and they are Cobalt Violet and Verona Green, which is just gorgeous. But look at this. This is Sugalite Genuine. Now, um, sugalite is a mineral, a naturally occurring mineral, and um, it's actually a precious stone. And there, at one point in time, there was a lot of it, um, but the mines all basically petered out. And as far as I know, no new discovery of sugalite has been made. So the fact that there is this gorgeous pigment made of it, and it has a natural sheen, a natural pearlescent sheen, because this is dry, and look at how it shines. And it's just incredibly gorgeous. This is sodalite, also a naturally occurring mineral, also a semi-precious gemstone. This is Smalt, which is the Windsor and Newton, and it's Dumont's Blue. And this is the St. Petersburg White Knights Glockenet, which um, is also a earthy green tone. So, 
ว้าวว้าวว้าวว้าว Look at all these just incredible watercolors and Morticia. This is just amazing. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to employ these in my artist studio, and I will put them to good use. I promise. Um, the thing that is left uh, to do is the neo colors, and so I thought that we would go ahead and do those uh, since another several hours have passed for me. And I set up my swatch book. Uh, now these are my Neo Color 40 set. And over here is a record of the colors that uh, Karen Dosh makes that I did not have. And I was able to cross 10 off the list. And here they are. So let's have a look at these in all their gorgeousness. And uh, now for these, I am going to use a water brush. I think I'm going to use the bigger of my two. And just going to verify that I have the right one. And I'm going to color just a strip for each one. This one is the flesh. And let's see here. The Van Dyke Brown. Just double checking to make sure. Van Dyke Brown, okay. And I have the right one. Now, uh, Neo Colors are a uh, highly pig or well, a pigmented, water soluble. Uh, now, the Neo Color 2s are a water soluble uh, watercolor, wax crayon, sorry, a water soluble wax crayon. And, okay, this is the Payne's Gray. So this one goes. down here. You can use these in a number of ways. You can either um, uh, pull it off, uh, you can use it like a crayon like this directly on the page or you can put it on a palette uh, either the Caran Dash palette or uh, I use oftentimes I use a little leftover piece of the uh, cutting boards that I use for protecting my pages and you can color right on it and then lift the um, pigment right off with your water brush. So I'm just filling in the spots. This is the purple violet. And this is the phthalo green. That is a pretty color. And this one is the night blue.
and this one is the bright green. And this one is the Chinese green. I'm just not, I mean, they don't really bleed through, but I kind of like to always put paper. Ooh. And then they just dissolve in the water. And you can, now, uh, Neo Colors. Neo color twos will um, they will lift. They are watercolor, so they will lift on you if you get them wet a second time. So that is something to keep in mind. Unlike the ink tents, um, the neo colors are truly watercolor pigment, Whereas ink tents are ink pigment. And you can see you can fade them out to just a hint of color. So it's nice that there's a flush tone. <coughs> and then I'm just cleaning off my little brush off to the side here on a uh, rather well used uh, piece of uh, paper towel. See, and they're very, very smooth. They lay down a beautiful solid color when used like that, you know, directly on the page. I have found that the trick with uh, Neo Colors is to, if you're going for a light shade, you want to go ahead and use the palette. If you want a more solid shade, you can go ahead and go directly on the paper. Um, and if it's splotchy, it's because you didn't use quite enough pigment. So at that point in time, you can just take it off the crayon directly with the water brush. Ooh, look at that. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. It will bleed not through, but into each other. So, um, and it, it bleeds wet to wet, so if you want to make a solid line of demarcation between two colors, be sure that you let one color dry first and then add the second color next to it. Otherwise, they'll bleed into each other and you get a fuzzy line. Pretty, pretty, pretty colors. That turquoise green. Ooh. <laughs> I love these. New Neo colors to play with. And make art. I can already see that color employed in the romantic country books. 
and Neocolor 2s work great in your coloring books. <coughs> Excuse me. You can use them for, um, certainly for backgrounds, but you can also do entire pictures with them. Haynes Gray, and this is the bright green. I love the fade out on these to just, just a hint of color. So pretty. And here's the Chinese yellow. Not only have I got you watching swatching, <laughs> but this is slightly longer than my normal videos. But it needed to be because I think it is so important that you get to see all of these gorgeous gorgeousness. This is a marvelous color and it is metallic as well. Um, it has a, a metallic meaning, in this case it's got a pearl sheen. which I just love. Okay. So, there are all, uh, or ten of the newest shades of the Neo Colors. Um, obviously, if you have the 84 set of Neo Colors, then you probably have these. But I had the 40 set that I was lucky enough, I bought it used on uh, et or eBay. Uh, I got a 40 set for $25, um, and absolutely love it. Here it is. There was, this obviously is an older tin, but, um, whoops, opening the lid. But there are my, my Neo Color Babies, and, uh, uh, they discounted it because the those ones right right there were broken. But, of course, with uh, Neo Colors, it doesn't mean anything at all that they're broken because they're, you know, pigment. They're crayons. So, broken crayons color, too. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, wow, wow, and double wow. Such a generous, generous gift, Morticia. Thank you so very, very much. Um, I will say that it has been a pleasure to get to know you um, and know more about you. Um, and I have so enjoyed our text conversations. And Morticia can make me laugh in two languages. <laughs> And, uh, and she says, that's hard to do. Uh, and um, you should get her talking sometime about the uh, different meanings of words uh, uh, in different languages and, uh, and even different dialects across the same country. Um, you will laugh for hours. We laughed for hours <laughs> uh, back and forth one night, late at night, and it was just so delightful. At any rate, um, everybody, I hope that you have enjoyed uh, watching me uh, and, you know, unbox and discover this really joyous gift uh, from a uh, stunning and wonderful lady. 
and uh, her generosity just knows no bounds. Uh, just the time and the effort that it took to put all of this together and uh, ship it to me all the way here in America. Um, it, uh, it, it's just astounding. And we are going to be coloring, uh, obviously, something uh, or painting something, and I will do uh, videos uh, about all of that. And um, we'll do it together. Until the next time we meet, please color. Oh, I was going to show you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait for it. Because at the top of this video, I said, and there's a Mandela book, too. And here it is. Uh, for those of you who enjoy mandalas, I do draw them. I have drawn a few, and uh, there are 48 of them in my book titled The Best of C.L. Aldridge Art Mandalas. This is my author copy, so or my uh, proof copy, so it wasn't for resale, but look for it in uh, on Amazon. All of my books are also available as PDFs in my Etsy shop. Uh, and there are links and everything below. So we've got paper, we've got brushes, we've got uh, palettes, we've got watercolors, we've got neocolors. We are set to go. And until we meet again, please color something pretty. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining me.